a desperate asthmatic kid is lying on the floor, trying to reach the inhaler she dropped. A blonde woman carrying a folder passes by and sees the girl laying on the floor. She spots the girl and says that it's really tragic. The girl then asks the blonde woman to help her out. The blonde woman says that she's really sad to see the girl like that. She grabs the inhaler and starts to taunt the girl, who desperately tries to retrieve it. The evil blonde woman laughs hysterically and asks why she should help a poor, dirty girl. She throws the inhaler on the floor and walks away. The girl then stops acting and says that that one was a real evil one. The kid then realizes that there's another lady approaching. She lays down on her piece of cardboard again and stops pretending to be having an asthma attack once again. The second lady approaches and spots the kid lying on the floor. The kid calls her, asking for help. The woman squats down to talk to the girl. She tells the girl that she doesn't care about her problems. She throws her rubbish at the girl and tells her to leave her alone. She gets up, kicks the girl's inhaler, and walks away. The girl then stops acting again and says that that woman was as evil as the previous one. She then sees a man approaching. She says that she's not sure because he looks a bit shady, but she decides to do her act once more. She pretends to have an attack again whilst the man approaches. He goes down and asks the girl if she's fine. He grabs her inhaler and puts it in her mouth, helping her to use it. He then asks if she feels better. The girl thanks him and says that he saved her life. The man asks why she's alone in that kind of place. He asks if she doesn't have a family or anything. The kid says that she doesn't have a family. The man says that in that case, he can buy her some clothes and food. She says that it would be much appreciated. The man asks if she's really sure, and she confirms. The man then points to a building and tells her that she can meet him there after his job interview. He says that she just needs to go there and ask for his name. He says that he hopes she gets better soon. He walks away, feeling really upset to see a kid in that sort of situation. The girl then gets up and ends up acting. She says that she never expected that a man like him would help her and that she was too quick to judge based on his physical appearance. Later, the girl walks to the building. She carefully approaches the candidates from behind. The blonde one is drinking some juice and waiting for her job interview. As the girl approaches her, she slaps her glass of juice, causing a messy accident. The blonde candidate overreacts and asks the young girl what's wrong with her. She calls the girl clumsy and says that she ruined everything. She asks the girl what she's doing there if she's just a homeless kid. She says that she's sorry about that and that she just popped there to see if she could find something to eat because she's very hungry. The male candidate comes to the girl's defense and says that there's no need to be harsh on her for an accident. The blonde woman complains that the bugger ruined her clothes. She tells the male candidate to forget it because a man with his appearance will never find a decent job. The man says that he's there for an interview, just like her. He tells her to be more respectful because they're in the same situation. The man invites the girl to follow him because he's going to find something for her to eat. The blonde woman stares at them, leaving with a disgusted face. Minutes later, more candidates arrive. Later that day, the blonde woman taunts the other candidates and tells them to stop wasting their time because she's certainly going to get that job, because she's very pretty. One of the other female candidates, the woman who threw the rubbish at the girl, says that beauty doesn't matter in there and that what they need is a good degree. The blonde laughs at her. Moments later, a man wearing a suit approaches and greets the candidates. The blonde woman is surprised to see him. He announces that he's the one responsible for selecting the new worker. He asks each of them to introduce themselves. The blonde woman is the first to stand up. She shakes the man's hand and says that her name is Valeria. She says that she's the best for the role and that he shouldn't waste his time with the others. The young man tells her to sit down. The other candidate also stands up and introduces herself. She says that her name is Alexandra. She says that it's a pleasure to meet him. She says that she's the one with the best degree and the best experience in the area. She says that, in her view, the other ones are not up to it. She sits down. The male candidate then stands up and greets the young recruiter. He introduces himself as Lewis. He says that he doesn't have anything to boast about aside from being ready to work very hard there. 
He says that he's not an academic or a wealthy person, but he really needs that job because his mother is severely ill and he needs to help her with the expenses. He says that he's only being honest and that he's keen to learn his trade and dedicate himself to that job. The other candidates laugh at him, mocking the poor man's humbleness. The young recruiter tells them to be more respectful. He tells Lewis to relax and have a seat. The recruiter then announces that he's going to invite the person who's going to give them the job. He then calls Stella to come to the waiting room. Suddenly, a young kid appears, the girl who was sleeping rough in the street and pretending to have asthma attacks. The blonde woman, shocked, asks the kid what she's supposed to be doing and calls her scruffy. She asks her where she stole those clothes from. The man in a suit gets really, really angry and shouts at them. He tells the blonde woman to be more respectful to his daughter. He says that she's in charge of choosing the one who's getting that job. He asks her who she's going to pick. The girl says that she's going to choose the man because the women treated her like rubbish. The women protest and say that they waited for hours for Nout. The blonde woman says that it's unbelievable that they're going to give the job to that scruffy man. She says that it was all a colossal waste of time. She insults the kid once again. The father shouts at them and tells the pair of scumbags to get out of his house immediately. They run away, fuming. The father talks to the man who got the job and praises him for being such a good man. He says that his daughter told him everything about how sweet he was to her. He says that he got a good job with good pay. He welcomes the man to his house. The humble man becomes very surprised and asks if he's for real. He thanks him for everything and says that he doesn't even know how to react. He says that he promises that he's going to take very good care of his daughter and even sacrifice his life if he needs to. The father tells Lewis that he knows he would. He says that he knows he's going to give his daughter the attention she deserves. He says that he's going to trust him 100%. He congratulates him and says that he will be waiting for him the following day. Lewis asks if he can make a call. The father says that, of course, he can. Lewis calls his mother. As she picks up, he informs her that he got the job. He says that now he will finally be able to help her and pay for her treatment. He tells her that everything will be fine and that he loves her very much. In life, it's very important to be humble, caring, and treat people well without expecting any kind of immediate reward, because those are some of the greatest human traits.